Good morning to you and to your family. I know this morning looks and feels a little bit different. Uh, as of right now, uh, when we're recording this, all it's doing is raining. And so I'm hoping by the morning when we're watching this together that we have some white powder on the ground. I'm excited for that. I do want to lay out a couple things this morning. One, this is going to look different. Uh, we just got back, the youth group and I just got back from Savannah, Tennessee at Evangelism University. And so when we came back and got home uh, tonight, uh, we were able to record service together. So this morning, I'm excited to worship with you this morning as a family, as we're commanded to do uh, in the New Testament as we gather together as the body of Christ. Now, that's what's amazing about the, the, the church is that it's not a building. It, it goes beyond the walls. And so this morning, as you worship with your family at home, but you also worship with us online, I'm really excited this morning that Cooper Harris is going to lead us in our singing. We're going to do that as a congregation here, uh, as the teenagers here are at my house for the night and maybe more days, uh, depending on the weather. Uh, then we've got Eli Powell is going to lead us in a prayer. Carson Walters is going to have a scripture reading, and I'm going to have the Lord's Supper and a few devotional thoughts. So I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready to worship. I hope you have your Bible. Um, and uh, let's worship God together just as we would in person with all of our heart and all of our focus. Let's all worship. I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Corinthians 15 10 but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace towards me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me well, please bow with me dear Lord thank you for all blessings you've given us thank you for letting us come here and learn more about you dear Lord and please help us take what we learned in the lesson today and use it in our everyday lives trust and pray 
Praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thy the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thy the glory. Revive us again. again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us Though this morning, this Lord's Supper is going to look in a little bit different and our senses are going to be a little bit different. I know you're probably sitting on your couch or at your kitchen table with your family and that's okay because the amazing thing about the Lord's Supper is it has nothing to do with us. It has all to do with Jesus. But I don't want our focus to be any less uh, just because of our setting that we're in this morning. And so if you have your Bible, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to look at the 26th verse. And this is Jesus right before he goes uh, to, the, to the cross. And he's with his disciples. He's with his family. In verse 26, he says, And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. And said, take, eat, this is my body. So as we, take the, as we take the bread this morning, I want us to think about, I've said this before, but I want us to think about this is what love represents. True love that what we were guaranteed death, but someone laid their life down for us. And that's what love is. That's what we're called to do is to love others. And sometimes it looks more for them and less for us. So this morning, let's pray as we take the bread together. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus and thank you for his love for us. God, this morning as we take this bread, we pray that we remember his body we pray that we remember his sacrifice, but Father, that we ultimately remember the love that he had for us. Father, thank you again. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Continuing in verse 27. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And just like the bread, as we hold this cup, it should remind us of something. You know, so many times we think like we can do anything, uh, we can accomplish anything, whatever needs to happen, we can do it on our own time. And the truth about this cup is that it represents that we can't, that without the blood of Jesus, none of this is possible. Living a life to a higher calling, serving others over ourselves, it's not possible without the blood of Jesus. So this morning, as you remember that, and as you think about that, let's be thankful together as we take it. Let's pray. Father God, again, we are thankful. God, thank you so much for this cup. Thank you for the blood and what it represents, Father. Thank you for the love of Jesus and his bravery and courage to go before the cross. Help us to remember these things this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I hope this morning that you have been encouraged by our worship so far. I know that God has been praised and God is pleased with our worship. I'm confident in that. This morning, like I've said uh, many times, this is different. This is uh, maybe seems unfamiliar since uh, COVID has kind of um, dampened back down and we've been able to worship together. Uh, but weather was just uh, too serious this morning. So I'm glad that we have technology that we can worship together. This morning, I'm, I'm going to keep our devotional thought fairly short. I'll go ahead and say if you hear any noises in the background, there's uh, eight or ten kids out in the garage. Um, little man's laying down tonight, so um, just ignore those, and uh, we'll focus on what we're doing. This morning, if you want to turn your Bibles uh, with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 10. Carson read this for us, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I want to just re-read uh, this uh, together. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And we'll actually start in verse 9 this time. Verse 9. It says, For I am the least of the apostles, this is Paul speaking, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God... I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, verse 11, therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. I mentioned earlier uh, that we just got back from Evangelism University. It takes place in Savannah, Tennessee at the Hardin County High School. And as I sat there on Friday night, I had a realization, a revelation even. As I sat there, I've been going to EU since I was in the seventh grade. That's over 15 years ago. And as I sat there, I had a rush of emotions as we were singing Friday night. I had a rush of emotions come over me as I thought about sitting there in those seats as a teenager. And I remember sitting in those seats thinking, looking at the guys that were on stage that were leading worship, thinking I will never be at that level in my faith. I'll never get to that point where I know as much or or my faith is that strong, or my beliefs are that strong. I can quote scripture to that level. I just thought to myself, I'll never even be there. But more so than that, I was struggling with things as every teenager, as all of us do even. And I remember thinking, how am I going to get past these things? How, we, you know, we hear all these good things at these youth rallies, and yet, how is God going to play an influence in my life with these things that I'm struggling with right now? I didn't know the answer to that. But it was amazing sitting there thinking about the things that were on my heart then. And I was completely crushed. I was completely floored to make the realization of how God played His hand, placed His hand in my life in those areas. And this morning, that's what I want our thought to be. I want us just to remember two points this morning. We're going to take some scripture and we're going to apply it. But I want you to know that the only reason I am what I am is by the grace of God. I was able to get through those things because God's love and his mercy and his providence in my life were present. And so this morning, I want us to remember those things in our own life and, and draw some connections. We're going to start in Jonah. If you'll flip over there, Jonah chapter 1. We're going to start in Jonah chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. Jonah 1, verses 1 through 3. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amity saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Verse 3, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish 
from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The first point I want us to think about this morning, I want you to remember if you're taking notes, you can write this down. But God is preparing you right now for what he needs you to be. Let me say that again. God is preparing you right now for the th things and the situations and the person that he needs you to be. You see, Jonah had laid out before him what God needed him to be, what he needed him to do. He needed him to go to Nineveh to talk to these people, to turn their hearts back towards God because they were focused on wickedness. They were focused on evil before God. And so God says, Jonah, I need you. I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to take what you know, what you believe, and I want you to give this to these people. And Jonah says, no. No, these people are too wicked. These people are too evil. They're not going to listen to what I have to say. And it's not what I think is the best thing to happen. You see, Jonah had his way of doing things. He had his plan, his life, and what he was going to do with it planned out. He even had the lives of the people of Nineveh planned out. And he said, no, God. And so he gets on the ship. And he sails out. We know the rest of the story. We know that God ultimately, God's will ultimately is played out in Jonah's life. Even though he's reluctant, even though he's swallowed by a whale, he's still reluctant to obey God. But what about us? What is God preparing you right now to do? What is he needing you to be? Who is he needing you to talk to? Who is he leading you to be an influence in their life? And are we listening? Are we asking God for the wisdom to know when he needs us to go, when he needs us to stay, when he needs us to reach out to somebody? Or is he placing things and people and opportunities in our lives that are so obvious that if we looked months or years down the road, we'd look back and be like, that was God. That was God playing in my life and I wasn't listening because it wasn't on my time. It wasn't perfect in my eyes. And so I just pushed it away. I pushed God away like Jonah was pushing the people of Nineveh away. God is preparing you right now for who and what he needs you to be. Our second verse that we're going to talk about this morning is going to be in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And we're going to look at the story of Saul and his conversion. But we're actually not going to look at Saul himself. We're not going to look at the story of Saul. We're going to look at the people that were influential into that. So if you'll go to Acts chapter 9... We're going to look in verse 10. Acts chapter 9, verse 10. Verse 10 says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias? And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. The second point that I want us to think about this morning is that God has prepared you for this moment. This moment. You know, in, in Ananias' life, this is the moment that God calls him and says, Ananias, I want you. I've chosen you to be a vessel to save Saul. I need you 
to go and speak to him. I've prepared you. I've given you the wisdom. I've given you the knowledge to know what to say to him, how to say it. I've given you wisdom and knowledge about who I am and the love that I have for a man like Saul. And I want you to go and tell. Let's see what Ananias says. Verse 13, then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias has a reaction that's probably very similar to the one that we would have, right? God, do you know who this is? Do you know what you're asking me to do? This man is the man who has been persecuting. He's the chief sinner as far as, as, as far as the ones that were attacking Christians, he's killed my family. He's killed my friends. He's killed my friends' families. And you're asking me to go and to tell him about who you are and what you want from him, who Jesus is, what Jesus has done for him? I, I, I don't think that can be me. I don't think that I'm capable of such a task. I, I don't think that I'm qualified. I don't think you know what I'm asking you. And Jesus, God says, or Jesus rather, says, go. I need him. I need you to go talk to him because he's going to do great things in my name. What is it that God is asking or has laid this moment at your feet right now? Who is the person? Who are the people that God has placed in your life? What are the opportunities that he's placed before you to make a decision about? And he's saying, I need you. I need you to be in this person's life. I need you to allow this person to be in your life because they're going to influence you or you're going to influence them in a way that is going to bring glory to my name. I need you to take this opportunity to go and to do and to be example, to be a disciple, to be a light in the darkness for my name. And if you realize these opportunities, if you realize these people that, that God has placed in your life, are you willing to go? Are you willing to say, yes, God, I will go and I will do? Or are you like Ananias here and saying, God, this can't be right. You don't know what you're asking of me. You don't, you don't know what you're wanting me to do. But God says, I have prepared you for this moment. I have laid certain things in your life that have led you to this moment, given you the wisdom, given you the courage, given you the experiences. You've experienced enough pain. You've had enough bad relationships that this is the one that I need you to take and I need you to advance. This is the opportunity that you've been waiting for. It may seem scary, but I have prepared you for this moment. I talked earlier right off the bat about sitting in the gym at Savannah and thinking to myself, the only reason I am where I am, the only reason I am what I am in the words of Paul is because of Jesus. It's because he was merciful, but also because he placed people he placed relationships. He placed events in my life and opportunities in my life to lead me to where he wanted me to be, to prepare me for who he needed me to be at this moment. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't take all those opportunities. 
I didn't say, yes, God, I will gladly go. I will gladly do. I will gladly accept your challenge. I'll gladly accept the mission you've called me to be on. I didn't always do that. Sometimes I push back. Sometimes I was like Jonah and I said, no, God, this is not for me. These people don't deserve it. This isn't my will. This isn't the right time for this to occur. And I said, no. But what's amazing and so comforting about God is that He continues to pour into our lives. When we push away against God, He continually pours into us. And I, I think if you take anything away from this morning, that's what God's called us to do is to love other people in that same way that no matter how many times they push against us and say, I don't want your love. I don't want this opportunity. I don't want this relationship. That we continually pour into them. That we continually give them what God has so generously given us. Time and time again, He's there to pick us up when we make mistakes and when we fall. So the question this morning is, are you willing are you willing to go? Are you willing to accept the challenge and the opportunity, the relationship that God has placed in your life? Or are you in this moment right now where you're saying, God, this isn't right for me at this moment. I think you've messed up. I think you've gotten this wrong because this can't be right. Like you're asking something that I can't do or I'm unwilling to do. This doesn't even make sense. If that's where you're at this morning, I, I pray that that you pray for wisdom. I pray that you pray for um, wisdom to know what God wants from you and how you can achieve that, how you can accept that challenge, but also for courage because sometimes, sometimes God calls us to do very courageous things, things that take us out of our comfort zone. But just like Ananias, God is calling us for something for His glory. And when we are serving in God's kingdom and glorifying his name with our lives and what we do and the relationships that we have, if God is for us, who can be against us? When we have God on our side, there's amazing things that can happen in his kingdom. This morning, I hope you enjoy whatever weather is outside. I hope you enjoy this morning with your family, but I also hope you've enjoyed... And you've poured your heart into worship this morning. We're going to close in a song. Uh, but I, I just want to close out this section with a prayer uh, of, of encouragement. But also that we ask God together to give us wisdom and strength to accept his challenges. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. God, thank you so much for choosing us. That you choose us over and over again. Even God, when we don't choose you, that you continually pour into our lives. God, I ask for wisdom for, for all of us listening to this, that whatever opportunities, whatever relationships that we're either struggling with right now, struggling to make a decision, or Father, that we are pushing away, that you've placed in our lives and we're pushing away because it makes us feel uncomfortable. God, maybe we feel unworthy. Maybe we feel non-capable. But God, that you are with us and that you will give us that strength God, bless us with courage to accept your mission. God, help us to be courageous to carry out uh, the great commission to go and make disciples and to start with those that you have charged us with, Father. God, we love you and we love Jesus. And it's in his name I pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. 